to buy any of a consultant uh, in pain medicine and anesthesia at University Hospital Leicester NHS Trust. Uh, today we're going to talk about the genicular nerve radio frequency treatment and genicular nerve diagnostic block. Uh, I usually perform this block using the ultrasound. Uh, first, we'll focus on the anatomy of the genicular nerves uh, with regards to the knee. So there are total six group of genicular nerves. These nerves are actually the articular branches from the big nerves like femoral nerve, obturator nerve and the sciatic nerve. In terms of the genicular nerves, majority of these nerves, they become uh, uh, sort of they supply to the knee capsule and the other structures uh, in and the groups are superomedial group of genicular nerve, middle group of genicular nerve, a superolateral group of genicular nerve, inferomedial group of genicular nerves, inferolateral group of genicular nerve, and then we have a recurrent uh, genicular nerve, which also comes off as a branch of uh, common peroneal and possibly from sciatic. In terms of blocking the nerves, uh, majority of the papers, they uh, recommend blocking the three groups, which are superomedial, inferomedial, and superolateral. And there are some publications about blocking the middle genicular nerve. The, uh, they, the, they, they recommend avoiding the superolateral and recurrent genicular nerve as these are also supplying to the muscles like peroneus longus, peroneus brevis, and getting a common peroneal nerve damage is much more higher and the patient could get the foot drop. So the recommendations are doing superomedial, inferomedial, and superolateral. Then in regards to performing this procedure, I do the diagnostic block using the ultrasound. And when I'm performing the radio frequency treatment, I use the x-rays in order to save the images. And uh, also, it tells me whether I'm actually at the right target. Majority of these nerves are coming at the junction of the shaft and the condyle, both at the sort of uh, femoral shaft and the condyle and tibial shaft and the condyle. In order to perform the procedure, I usually ask the patient to sort of, you know, turn the leg outwards. I put a pillow underneath uh, after Prepping and dripping, I uh, usually use the high frequency linear ultrasound probe. And uh, the structures I'm interested in is the vastus medialis for the superomedial group of genicular nerve and uh, the femoral shaft where it becomes a femoral, femoral condyle. And I'll show that to you. So here we are actually using the high frequency linear probe where the left side of the screen is superior, the right side of the screen is inferior and as you could see on this image you have the vastus medialis muscle you see the arterial pulsations and in, in the vastus medialis muscle that's the artery that's supplying feeding to vastus medialis muscle and you could see another small vessel there that's your uh, genicular artery and uh, majority of times the genicular nerves accompany the genicular artery as you could see this is a femoral shaft as a femoral shaft then becomes a femoral condyle so to perform the diagnostic block, I usually perform uh, it with the outer plane technique. And as this depth is only uh, two centimeters, you could perform this block using a 25 gauge hypodermic needle, doing an outer plane technique and uh, raising the, uh, putting, putting the local anesthetic about two mLs to two and a half mLs in that area. So that's your superomedial genicular nerve block. Similar fashion, we will perform the inferomedial genicular nerve block and the, the probe position is, uh, we're using the high frequency linear probe again. Uh, the probe position is at the, on the tibia and the structures I'm looking for is a tibial shaft where it becomes tibial condyle. The jun junction of tibial shaft and tibial condyle. And as you could see in that image, that there is an artery which is pulsating, which is your inferomedial geniculate artery. And the genicular nerves usually accompany this artery and the block will be performed using an outer plane technique with 25 gauge needle uh, and about two mL of local anesthetic. Then we will move on to superolateral genicular nerves. For this, I ask the patient to turn the leg inside if they can, uh, and then we will use the same technique as we did for the superomedial genicular nerves using the ultrasound high frequency linear probe. And here we are looking for the uh, femoral shaft where it becomes a femoral condyle so as you could see this upslope and you could see the arterial pulsation here in the area that's your superolateral genical artery and you will perform this block using outer plane technique with the 25 gauge needle as this depth is very shallow 25 gauge needle you land uh, at the junction of the shaft and the condyle and uh, use about two to two and a half mLs of local anesthetic 
uh, and then, then I give the patient a pain diary to keep uh, and also ask them how much percentage of pain relief they've had. So these are the three group of genicular nerves that we will uh, sort of, you know, uh, uh, block for the diagnostic purpose. Followed by that, we perform the radio frequency using the same technique uh, and I use the x-rays. With regards to performing the intermediate or middle group of genicular nerves, as you could see on there, I'm going to increase the brightness and uh, reduce the depth. To perform the intermediate group of genicular nerves, this is your femoral femur, uh, the, uh, the femoral shaft, and we, what we are looking for is basically the quadricep tendon, which you could see here, and these group of genicular nerves are usually coming underneath the quadricep tendon, so the needle is usually uh, inserted with an in-plane technique and putting about two ml to two and a half local two, two and a half ml of local anesthetic and you can perform use the same technique to perform the radio frequency thanks very much